That was the voice of Sharifa Muay before embracing Islam. Her name now is Nur Saada. Nur Saada performed as a professional classical musician at the very highest level of the profession in New York City and abroad. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Noor Saadi. I was born Sherry Van Wyck. I was born in the state of Wisconsin in the United States, which is a rather flat land of farmlands known as the Dairy State. It's a very beautiful and simple place to grow up. I was raised as a Christian. We attended the uh, what's now called the United Church of Christ, which is called the Congregational Church when I was growing up, and it was a very simple church, not a lot of ceremony, not a lot of ritual, not a lot of pageantry. Simple, but it was very well known for its interest in the arts and had a very good music program. As I grew up, I had a somewhat musical family, amateur musicians. There was always music in the house and there was music in the church, so I was surrounded by music in my life and I developed an early taste for music and seemed to have some natural abilities plucking away at the piano when I was a young girl and uh, some natural abilities for singing and harmonizing and started off singing with a small group of girls professionally when I was eight years old. We sang, harmonized, did a lot of musical programs throughout Wisconsin which were popular at the time, going to different communities and doing uh, talent so shows in New York like City uh, and working my way up to becoming a full-time professional paid musician as a concert artist and an opera singer. Loved what I did absolutely loved what I did, completely happy with my life, a happy camper all my days, happy family, loved what I did. I was very one of those fortunate few who had a job that she absolutely loved and I pursued it with a vengeance and I was very determined to get ahead and pursue this goal of mine, hoping to become, I guess, a world famous singer someday. I moved into a new neighborhood in New York and stumbled into a coffee shop run by an Egyptian. And this was very novel. I'd never met an Egyptian before. As a singer, I had traveled a lot in Europe, auditioning for opera houses and things like that, and was always interested in different people, different ways of life, how they live their lives. I had always believed in God and felt I had a strong connection with God, but when I prayed, it was to God alone. In America, growing up as a Christian, it's sort of common belief among all of us that Jesus was the Son of God, but I guess for me, I didn't actually worship Jesus. I thought of him as a great, great man. I loved him. I loved what he said. I loved what I knew of him that he did. But when I had a question or I needed advice or consolation or I had a need, I went to God for that. I walked into this Egyptian coffee shop and was fascinated. Oh, an Egyptian, I'd never met anybody from this part of the world before. Tell me about Pharaoh. Tell me about the pyramids and things like this. And he proceeded to tell me, and then somehow he mentioned the fact that he was a Muslim. And I told him frankly, and with great embarrassment, that I was ashamed to tell him I didn't know anything about Muslims and his religion. So this brother began talking to me about Islam, and I was absolutely floored. Um, growing up as a well-read woman, fairly well-read, well-traveled, at least into Europe, um, someone who was always fascinated with other cultures and other people, it was absolutely earth-shattering news to me that other than Jews and Christians, there was another group of monotheistic people in the world, and a rather large group at that, one point billion people in the world. They were not just Jews and Christians, but there were another group of people that followed that same religious tradition from Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, all the way through Muhammad, peace be upon him. And when he started telling me that within the religion of Islam, all these prophets were very highly regarded and he started talking about Adam and Noah and Moses and Abraham and Jesus, peace be upon them all. I was stunned, shocked. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how stunned I was. And this was something I just couldn't wait to hear more about and find out how could I have reached an age and an ability and a level in my life and not know that this is huge news. This was huge and just stunning news to me that there were 1.5 billion people in the world that believed basically what I believed and I had no knowledge of that whatsoever and neither did anybody else and, that uh, I knew of. I was singing at a church, one of the highest paid church jobs in all of Manhattan and we were getting ready for the Christmas services and uh, this was a Unitarian church where people of different faiths can come together and worship because they also do not believe in the Trinity and the deity of Jesus, peace be, upon, peace be upon him. They think of him as a great man, not even as a prophet. So we would have couples who were both Jewish and Christian able to worship, worship at this church. 
a choir director came to us getting ready for the Christmas service, which is a lot of music, a lot of preparation. And he came to us and he said, people in the congregation are complaining that the word God is used too much in our songs. We're going to substitute the word God with the word love from now on. And I was just shocked. This is a church for heaven's sakes. We're going to say love, it's, and love did this, and love did that, instead of God. And I said, that's it. I, I can't, I'm a Muslim now, I cannot do this. And between the Thursday night uh, rehearsal and the Sunday morning service, I said, that's it, I'm quitting and I have to go take my shahada.